Greetings, everybody. We're back. This is The Cutting Room Floor. The Cutting Room Floor is a product of Smyrna Presbyterian Church, where once a week we sit down with our pastors after the Lord's Day sermon to ask our pastors, hey, what was on the cutting room floor? And as you see today, we have our, our associate pastor, Danny Myers, in the building. And today, as I like to ask, hey, Danny, what was on the cutting room floor? But before we do that, how's it going today, Dan? Uh, it's great to be back with you, Jason, and doing well. We're celebrating our vacation Bible school, and so at least maybe we should comment on that in case you hear little children in the background. I, I cannot take credit for all of those voices. Perhaps they're mine, but perhaps they're others. And so it's a great day to be at Smyrna Presbyterian Church. I love it. I love it. Uh, I, I was just going to ignore it. I was going to say, hey, we're going to pretend like there's no noises coming from by until they started beating your door down. Once they start beating your door down, <laughs> then I'll... Well, We'll call the authorities. But um, right. no, hey, I appreciate it, man. Thank you for your time today. And well, this past Sunday, you preached from Acts chapter 17, 1 through 15. You want to give us a little synopsis and maybe tell us what was on the cutting room floor? Sure, absolutely. You know, uh, Acts 17, at least the very beginning, most people kind of have a better picture of Acts 17 when Paul and uh, gets to Athens, but actually the beginning of Acts chapter 17 is when Paul and Silas are in Thessalonica, and then they move uh, due to some persecution and hostility to Berea. And so you, you get a picture of the ministry of Paul and Silas in Thessalonica. They enter a synagogue, uh, not just once, but they're there, as Luke tells us, for three Sabbath days. And so there's a picture of perhaps three weeks, maybe a month of Paul and Silas going into the synagogue, ministering to uh, the Jews there. And what we recognize is that there are a great deal, a significant uh, group of men and women, as Luke says, uh, of Gentiles coming to Christ and the Jews are mad, they're jealous. And so persecution arises and uh, they look for Paul and Silas, can't find them. They go into the house of Jason, who most would say was housing Paul, and they take Jason and brothers out and, and they are persecuted for it. And they're Paul and Silas are rushed to Berea, probably somewhere around 55 miles away from Thessalonica, and they have a very different experience, at least in the beginning, and that is the Bereans uh, and their diligence, their eagerness to hear the word of God. And yet, uh, when you keep reading, you find out some of the Jews from Thessalonica, they, they also come to Berea to create chaos, uh, but yet the word of God seems to be firmly planted within the heart's uh, and the minds of some of the Bereans there. And so we looked at both cities and talked a little bit about Paul's preaching and that it is similar what his content is, and yet there seem to be very different responses. And so we, we spoke on those matters. I love it. Thank you so much for the synopsis. Is there anything that maybe you would have liked to have discussed more or had you more time you would have discussed? Um, you can even interject some of your bad dad jokes if you wanted to, if those maybe didn't make it. But uh, tell me, what, was there anything else that you wanted to add? Yeah, you know, I think um, for those who have heard the sermon, um, you know, one of the challenges of speaking and it being recorded is sometimes people hear it and try to apply specifically to their uh, circumstance. And, uh, and that's fair and fine when you're using the truth of God's word. But uh, I would like to say at least one thing. You know, I, I was uh, trying to exhort people, and mm -hmm. that is to examine the truth of God, and and that is a countercultural thing in our day. Uh, you know, you might find the argument um, helpful to say we don't examine truth at all, uh, but I think it's even easier to say, well, we're we're also not a culture that examines God's truth, and that is the Word. Uh, but I. You know, one thing I, I probably owe an apology at some measure is saying, you know, I didn't help our own people recognize um, in my exhortation, I should have been more encouraging to say, yes, we need to be those who examine the truth. But there are many of you who are, and I'm so thankful. I'm thankful for the encouragement that we have many people who are hungry, who, in fact, as Luke says about the Bereans, they receive it with eagerness. We have a very receptive congregation to truth, and it, it makes me so thankful. Um, but there are matters that I think are of great significance, and that is that we don't give our attention to what it means to diligently examine truth. And so I make a comment about um, the amount of study Bibles 
that there's 1,084 different study Bibles. And I would like to say, at least publicly here, I could have said it better there, uh, that yes, is there a need for more than one study Bible? Sure, because you have different translations. But is there a need for, say, the ultimate American study Bible, as is a published study Bible? Please tell me the answer is, of course not. It is unfortunately true. And one of the things I, I would like to get across here that I don't think I did very well there is to say, you know, we live in this world that says if we package our Bibles a little bit more attractive, maybe we can persuade people to read it. And my encouragement is it's not the packaging that we need to be persuaded by. It's the truth that's inside the package. What we need is the content itself. Uh, because the colors and the pictures and the comments about the Bible, as much as that might be helpful, it's not the Bible. And it's not what is transformative. It is not what is transcendent truth. That means it will go from the very inception of it to all eternity. And so uh, I would love to have spent more time trying to remind people and encourage people, we all need more of the Bible. And so I was quoting a gentleman who was actually quoting someone else. And um, again, I still don't know who he was quoting, but the attitude by which we open our Bibles to have the moment that says, take your sandals off. This is holy ground. You open your Bible and, and you are entering into the holy of holies, as it were. Here is the presence of God, because what you get is the word of God. You get his entire truth. And so... Um, I want people to love the word of God. There's a verse in Jeremiah that he says, I ate your word mm -hmm. and in it, it became my delight. And, and I wish that that was more true for the people of God. Um, if I could summarize the Bereans, I think they're a fair description of say Psalm 119. Those who just love the law of the Lord and who meditate on it. And so, um, uh, I wish I would have spent more time encouraging people to use their Bible to enter into this holy place called the word uh, and, and not give so much attention to the packaging of it, to the colors of it, uh, but more to the person who is being discussed and who is revealing himself in it. I love it. I love it. Well, Danny, I appreciate it, man. Thank you so very much. Um, that was a wonderful sermon. And if somebody did not, was not able to catch the sermon and whatnot. The link to the full worship service will be in the description as well as the sermon audio. If you just want the sermon that Danny preached on this past Sunday, it'll be in the description as well. Um, anything else you want to add before we get out of here, sir, and get you back to uh, vacation Bible school, back to uh, the deserted island <laughs> vacation Bible school? No, brother. Uh, just uh, want to encourage people. Um, Again, I, I think Luke is telling us something quite profound that those, and you see it in both Thessalonica actually and in Berea, those who actually examine the scriptures, they respond in worship and in believing. And what a privilege we have to be in this day. Uh, and, you know, I make a comment in the sermon to provide the cultural climate that these people didn't have a Bible at home. They, they would have had to use the public Bible, the public scroll. Uh, right. But we have Bibles in our homes. We have Bibles in our pockets. Mm -hmm. uh, use them because I, I really do think it will provide not just the foundation for all of life, a joyful life, a good life. It'll lead people to worship. They will hunger and thirst for righteousness. And so that would be my encouragement to myself and to everyone else. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Danny. Um, I will make sure that, again, the description to the worship service will be in the description down below, as well as the link to the sermon audio is down there as well. Thank you very much for tuning in to the cutting room floor, which is, again, a product of Smyrna Presbyterian Church, where once a week we sit down with our pastors and ask, hey, what was on the cutting room floor? We appreciate you stopping by, liking, sharing, subscribing, and tuning in, and we'll see you again next time. Until next time, everybody, grace and peace. Take care.